Hey guys, how's it going? I'm from Jack Tutors, and today we're going to cover the psychology topic of interference. So, in this video we're going to first define what the interference theory of psychology is, and then we're going to walk through a few examples of how we would apply this theory and how we would tackle some problems that your professor or your class might throw at you. So, uh, the interference theory in psychology is a theory that's related to human memory and it talks about how humans forget things. And what interference theory says is that forgetting happens because one source of information in your head, so um, one thing that you learn, uh, messes with or interferes with the uh, source of another, um, another source of information in your head. So you have one source of knowledge, and that's going to mess with another source of knowledge in your head, which leaves you unable to rec recall or unable to use one of these sources of information. So that's the general idea of interference. Um, there are two uh, more specific subsets of interference, and we're going to walk through these and define them. The first one is retroactive interference, and this happens uh, when a newer source of information that you just learned um, interferes with an older source of information. So in these diagrams, the arrow indicates the direction of interference, and that's really important. So the arrow goes from the interfering source to the source that is interfered with. So in retroactive interference, this source B, so this uh, source B that you're learning about, is going to interfere with your previous thought excuse me, your previous knowledge about A. So that's going to leave you unable to fully recall A later when you're asked to. So an example of this might be, uh, let's say, for example, that your A is your old psychology course from last semester, and B is your psychology course that you're taking this semester that has different topics in it. So let's say that um, you learned some new cool stuff in your class in this semester, but uh, then at home you're trying to recall what you learned last semester in your psychology course, and you find yourself unable to. And all you can remember, all you can think about is your new, newly acquired or recently acquired psychology information. So this is an example of retroactive interference. The new information that you've recently learned in your psychology course this semester is interfering with the information you obtained last semester. So the second subset of interference is proactive interference, and as you might have guessed, it's the opposite direction of interference. In this case, an older source of information is interfering with your ability to obtain a newer source of information. So as you can see in this case, the arrow is pointing from A to B, meaning that the older source of, informa of information, source A, is interfering with your ability to learn source B. And an example of this might be, uh, let's say that previously you've learned Chinese, some Chinese, and then now you're trying to learn some Japanese. So A is Chinese and B is Japanese. And let's say that because the languages are have some similar attributes, um, when you try to sit down and learn some Japanese, which is the new subject that you're trying to learn, all you can think about are the rules, the grammar rules and the words from your Chinese. And in this, so in this case, you have your old information, your chi information about the Chinese language interfering with your ability to learn the new information about the Japanese language. And so later when you're asked to recall information about the new resource, the newer topic of Japanese, you are unable to fully recall because of this proactive interference. So those are the basic ideas of the, uh, the types, different types of interference. Um, if you're still kind of confused about what each kind of interference entails, uh, I suggest you just look at the prefixes when you're ever you're confused, just think of what the prefixes mean. Uh, here, retro and pro. So retro means going back and pro means going forward. So this back and forward prefix is all you have to remember is that they refer to the direction of interference. So that's why I said it's important to know the direction of interference for each type of interference. So with retroactive interference going back, the, inter the interference is going back, which means that the new information is messing with the old information. The interference is going back in time. 
And with the proactive interference, the interference is going forward in time, meaning that the older information is messing with the newer information. <laughs> so whenever you forget the exact definitions or which one is which, just look at the prefixes and you should be fine. So um, as for question types that, peop uh, that, that professors might ask of you usually uh, for this topic, it will probably be, they, give, they will give you a scenario of two different types of information, one messing with the other, and they'll ask you, what type of interference are we observing? So uh, we just walked through two of these kinds of examples. So pretty simple if you just have these definitions down pat, these two definitions. Uh, let's just walk through another example to um, really drive home the idea. Uh, let's say that last semester you had a biology course that you took, and this semester you're taking an, an anatomy course. And the two have similar topics, but there's different information for each one of them. And so your A is biology and your B is anatomy. And let's say that in your anatomy course recently, all when you've been going over the information, all you can think about is the information from your biology course. And that's all you can remember when you're going home to review over what you've learned in your anatomy course. And when you try to recall stuff in your anatomy course, you find yourself unable to. And all you can think about is your biology information. So, and then the question asks you, is this proactive interference or is this retroactive interference? And what we have to do to answer this question is we look at the direction of interference. And so our new, our ability to uh, learn our new information is being messed with. So it must be the old information messing with our new information. And as we know, that's a forward direction flow of interference, meaning that this interference is indeed proactive. So this is the kind of thought sequencing that you need to use when you go through these types of problems. Um, hopefully this video has made it clear to you what interference is and the differences between the two types of interference and how to spot when one type of interference is at work in a scenario and when the other is. So hopefully you guys feel comfortable with this topic of interference now.